Hi, welcome to another video. So this video is going to be talking about the change notice or interrupt on change. So you can see my regular 7 inch TFT running a clock. It's got a couple of interrupts picking up um, solar panel and time via Bluetooth. And the idea of interrupt on change or change notice is if a pin changes on the microcontroller you can set up an interrupt and get the thing to do something else. So what I've done, started trying to get this touch screen going and you'll see if I just click the screen it starts flicking through different colours so it's obviously picking up a change on the interrupt on this screen and changing the colour and it's very re responsive I put a small delay in there so it you know, doesn't bounce or if I hold the screen you can see that and if without a delay it was flicking through sort of two or three colours at once so what I'll do, I'll uh, show you the code uh, and some details on the data sheet and go from there so that's a regular clock and you see it's sensing this particular one I think it's RB4 is one of the change notice pins, CN pins uh, it sees CN go from high to low and you can have it the other way around if you want. Sees that pin change and runs an interrupt, which I'll show you the code. What I'm planning to do is eventually, as soon as the microcontroller sees this screen change or sees me touch this screen, uh, it's then going to write to the controller for the touch screen and then I'll be able to get the coordinates. But how easy that's going to be, I don't know. It looks pretty complicated but so that's where I've got so far at least we've got the interrupt for the touchscreen right let me show you some details right so this is the PIC32 data sheet for microchip uh, my current microcontroller is this one here 795512 so because of these lines I'm going to go up to the previous drawing but the pins are all the same anyway all these change pins so if you want an interrupt uh, and change notice you need to find the relevant pins so uh, for example I'm using RB4 which is change notice 6 uh, and you can see that RB3 change notice 5 change notice 4 3 2 don't know if there's any others on this side there might be a lot of change notice, 8, 9, 10. There's actually, I believe, 21 change notice pins that you can select. Uh, I think on this other side, I thought there's one near the top somewhere. Look, change notice 1 is on RC13. So have a look at the data sheet and you'll find uh, the relevant CN pins. So CN for change notice. I believe on the old PIC 16s, uh, it was they, it was called interrupt on change but now it's change notice so that will hopefully give you an idea of what you're looking for CN for change notice so then you want IO ports memory organization there we go we open that then that and then scroll all the way down I know it's a long way down here you want the registers that control those CN pins change notice here we are right, so this is the change notice register map so I've got the 795512 and as I said there's 21 change notice pins I just zoom you in here start from the right so change notice 0 obviously down here up to 15 and then 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 so 21 pins I was interrupted there so 21 change notice enable pins and uh, 21 pull up enable so resistor pull ups so these are the three primary registers but then what you'd need to do ideally but I've done it all for you is go to the interrupts 
now you want to go down to IO ports and you'll see microchip tell you there if I close it down there's a separate data sheet section 12 IO ports from microchip.com so I don't know if this link will take me there maybe it will I'll show you where to find the data sheets in case you're not familiar so you want design support and then reference manuals down here click on reference manuals and depending on what microcontroller you have so put a filter in here so these are there's like a thousand or 326 items uh, here at the moment 15 per page so we want if we put pick 32 which is the one I'm using so include that filter and you see we're down to three pages and the data sheet said section 12 IO ports right so this is obviously section 12 IO ports so shut this page down I scroll down so some of this material is in the regular data sheet but this supplementary reference manual gives you extras it registers for input change notification which is what we're looking for in this video so you see there one two three four five five basic functions we need or five registers so as you can see change notice enable change notice status actually we don't need status change notice pull up enable pull down enable and change notice control so we scroll down a bit further so this is the cncom register so we want bit 15 to turn on right so here we are down to page 15 and it gives you examples here as you can see the cn module on so cncom this is bit 15 equals 1 so you've got the option of pull-ups or pull-downs this is the for the pick 32s you need interrupt priority bits and sub priority you don't necessarily need the sub priority good practice to do it so for the change notice interrupt priority bits the actual bits are cnip bits 2 1 and 0 so there's three bits there to set or this using this register ipc6 is bit 20 down to bit 18 so 20 19 18 and then the sub priority this IP6 is 17 16 so two more bits there this is the change notice interrupt flag so interrupt flag status 1 bit 0 you clear that to clear the flag change notice interrupt enable or ICE1 bit 0 equals 1 so hopefully that makes sense to you. Right, so this is the actual data sheet, the PIC32 data sheet. Uh, so you can see here, interrupt IQ vector and bit location. So you scroll down, so on page 122, scroll down. And so if you didn't have that other supplementary reference manual, just come down to here, look, CN, input change interrupt. So these are the interrupt IRQ and vectors. And you see there the registers we need to set to get the thing going so that's the interrupt flag status one bit zero interrupt enable bit zero and this is the interrupt priority 20 down to 18 and 17 down to 16 that's a priority and sub priority uh, as i say on page 122 Right, this is some of the code I've written. I'm using Microelectronica's Micro C Pro for PIC32. We want the interrupt notice. As I said, the pin's got to be an input. Or well, I believe it's got to be an input. So here I've got trisb.bit4 of trisb is 1, 1 being an input. If it was a 0, it would be an output. And remember, you can look at the change notice pins on the PIC32 on page 16 of the data sheet. Next we've got a change notice configuration, bit 15, so you, you can 
have an F or a B. It's a bit 15 or F15. Don't know where the F comes from, but same difference, or they're both the same. So this is the interrupt enable. Bit zero equals one. That's enabling the interrupt. And you see from the data sheet it said IEC bit zero or CNIE equals one. So well, you can see up there how I've remmed it out. Remmed or removed. If I take out these two slashes and delete that one, you could put it in binary representation. So IEC one equals zero B for binary and then one. So obviously that's bit zero first, that'd be binary. There's many different ways to set different bits or registers. And you can see here, this is what I did initially. So this is the interrupt priority control, uh, six. And you can see there, we've got bit 20, 19, 18, 17, and 16. It said those all had to be one, followed by a string of zeros. Only trouble is if you have a binary for this register, depending on if you've got other interrupts, maybe some of these would need to be on and off. So it's best you can just pull up the individual bits. And you remember from the data sheet, so CNIP, so interrupt priority, bit two, bit one, and bit zero, they're all ones. Or from the data sheet uh, with the IRQs and vectors, it said IPC6, bit 18, 19, and 20. So that's another way that does the same as that. These are the individual bits. These are turning on the bits in the register. So these are the sub priorities. CNIS1 underscore bit equals one, and CNIS0 underscore bit equals one. They're the two sub priority bits. So this is the change notice enable on CN6. So going back to the data sheet, I've got my interrupt on the touchscreen controller wired up to RB4. And you see RB4 is CN6. So that's where that last CN comes from. So just to refresh your memory, this is page 122 of the regular data sheet. Down the bottom, you remember CN input change interrupt. So this is the IRQ and vector flag enable priority and sub priority. So you can turn these bits on, as I said, 70, 16, 2018, bit zero, bit zero. Don't worry about them. It's all done for you in the interrupt. Or you can use the IO port, the supplementary part 12, and turn on the individual bits. I'm sure in it, they're in this data sheet somewhere, but. You can see microchip give you that supplementary bit from the uh, the reference manual. Right, this is the interrupt already configured, but I'll show you how to do it micro C in case you're a beginner. So let's move up here, get some space here. So if you right click, I hope you can see this down here, down the bottom, it says interrupt assistant. So what I'll do, I'll click on that. Interrupt assistant. So you can call it whatever you like. So if we go YouTube underscore YouTube interrupt. And says what section of the microcontroller do we want to act as an interrupt? So as discussed before, scroll down here we are looking for change notice. As I say, uh, I think on the PIC 16s and 18s, it used to be called IOC, interrupt on change, but now it's CN. So these are all the interrupts for the UARTs, SPIs, I2Cs, that sort of stuff. And there we go, change notice. And we want a high level interrupt, uh, seven, just leave this SRS, it all can be, can be auto. So you click okay. Right, so that's our interrupt. Forget it. Leave this other stuff out of the way. That's our interrupt. We've enabled the change notice. That's our interrupt. High priority seven. And we don't need to put much in here because we've got the change notice interrupt flag. So whatever we gonna whatever we put in here is going to happen. So just to demonstrate. 
if I get this, copy this in this interrupt, if I just put fill screen, see how, and to figure out what colors. Just go control and then the space bar. So let's have fuchsia. So once we see a change notice interrupt, it's gonna come here and change the screen. But what we need to do is clear the flag first. So I'll copy it from my other interrupt. So clear the flag once we're here. So change notice interrupt flag equals naught. You could also, if I scroll down, Change notice intro flag is there. You could have the IFS1 uh, bit naught equals naught, that clears the flag, or IFS1 of the CNIF register bit naught. But that's the simplest way, just change notice intro flag is zero. So you're clearing the flag. On this previous interrupt, I was dis disabling the UART interrupts. I've got two UARTs, one for the time, one for the solar panel current. Fill in this green, re-enabling the UART interrupts. And so that it would change color, I just put in a few other jars for counter. So it would change the color, but so as not to get confusing. So once we see a change notice, it's gonna clear the flag and change the color of the screen. Right, so I've removed that other previous interrupt just with the backslash and star. And down the bottom star backslash just to get rid of that previous interrupt. So this is the interrupt we've just done. Now up to the top. Build and program. And over to the screen. So you see it's going to be programming. You see the blue LED in the corner up here. So that's programming the microcontroller. Right, so that's happily running the clock, picking up two UARTs. There we are, picking up two UART strings. With the two Bluetooth devices, it's running the clock, it's actually doing some other stuff which is unplugged at the moment, but so if we just touch that screen, and that's it. It instantly saw a change on B4, it runs that interrupt, and gives us a new color. So if I leave that for a minute, the picture will come back up. So the change notice, change on interrupt or interrupt on change, that's how you do it on a pick 32. Hopefully you found this helpful. Thank you very much.